Hello dear friends, here we are. This is Moment of Harmony with Professor Euripides Varsanov. This is day three and we're studying messages that he wrote for those who are not acquainted. This is him. He was born on May 1880 and this carnating 1918, November 1st, 1918. He lived in the city of Sacramento in Brazil and he really divided waters with his deeds. For those who are not acquainted, Euripides Barçanovo is considered the most complete spiritist medium that has ever existed. We know that he had direct connection with Jesus, Mother Mary and many others. We can even call him a medium of Jesus. And <clears throat> Euripides Barçanufo, very in a visionary way, as much as Allan Kardec, he observed that education is the foundation of a transformed society. So he created the first school under the principles of the Christ consciousness the Promised Consoler in the city of Sacramento and the beautiful educational proposal still exists to date revolutionizing the way we teach children and youth. So if you plan on visiting Brazil that's a place to stop by to observe and to learn. His great grandniece Alzira Bessa Amui and her family kept the legacy very faithfully, very seriously. It all began with him. Generations have continued the work and today we still have it all. The messages we have selected to share with you bring to us true harmony. These are messages that were received in 1955 by one of the people that worked with him directly, Corina Novellino. And she brought these messages, talking to Chico Xavier, he vouched for it, and we continue the works. Finally, these messages are coming to life in English. We need it to spread this call to the world. And this begins tonight by revisiting our, our commitment with the Master. We often talk about the Master committed to us, but today Professor Euripides Barsonufo in an unprecedented way, as a wonderful educator, is going to call us for another perspective. The message is very short, but truly deep. Before I read the message, I want to open a parenthesis and say that we just arrived in our home in Virginia after a beautiful trip to New York, visiting spiritist centers and participating in a very beautiful event today, Mindfulness in the Family, coordinated by several centers in the tri-state area. And, uh, uh, it happened actually at the Mount Vernon Spiritist Center headquarters. We had the opportunity of seeing many friends who will come here every night at 11 p.m. Teresa Castro. It was a true joy to to see you there, to to participate in activities with you. So souls and her beautiful daughter Luana, and also Cesa Costa. Carrie and Mark were there, Carlos in Virginia, and we saw our friends from the Inner Enlightenment as well, which was so beautiful. So many of you, good memories, Angelita, Dilson, we saw yesterday in the Inner Enlightenment. So it was a joy. Melissa, beautiful experiences we have to share with you because these bonds we are creating here are more than words can tell. Just feeling the presences of one another suffices to know that we're bonded together. To be
build a new foundation. In this trip, we came, you know, we were able traveling, having to stop because from here to New York, it's pretty much like five, hour, five hours and a half for us, plus the storm, so it took a little longer. <laughs> but the beauty of it all is that the good spirits allowed us to see how our world really needs us. Stopping by at gas stations, at fast food, <laughs> you know, chains just to pit stop and grab something quickly. We realize that our society is in urgent need of a job well done, as Paul of Tarsus used to say, and it's quoted in the book Paul and, Paul and Stephen. God is, a <clears throat> is really calling us. Society more than ever needs our awareness. And I think it's precisely the message that Professor Lipitz Barsanufo comes to bring to us. Let's not forget, we are awake. Now we need to know what to do. So let us go straight to the message tonight. <clears throat> Professor Lipitz Barsanufo, on April 7th, 1955, writes to us through Corina Novellino, and we are truly reverent to that. My brothers and sisters, the somber garden of the Gethsemane wrapped up 2,000 years ago the greatest pain that our world was given to anyone to suffer. However, that pain did not come from near martyrdom, but it had remote origins. It had really deep roots in the past of humankind, and it extended its roots to the present. That pain was the human incomprehension, the hardening of the soul that provided to the heart of the master the greatest suffering of that hour. Out of love, the Christ came down to the world. However, human beings have not corresponded to the sacrifice of the Christ. Past 2,000 years, the landscape of the Gethsemane <clears throat> is still the same. The same shadows of the comfort zone represented by the disciples that slept in the most extreme hour of the arrival of the adversaries of the Master. The same desertions in the hour of testimonial. Past two millennia, human beings remain oblivious to the fundamental problems of salvation. The same misunderstandings, the same shadows of the past. How long will the Christ await the balance of the thoughts and deeds of the pure, the poor, the poor human species by whose love he had immolated himself on the Calvary. May the Master always protect us. Euripides. This message is apparently simple, but has more elements that we can never dissect. Let's do the best we can with the information we have at hand, with the teachings of Spiritism. The foundation of this message is a call to awareness. Do you remember when Jesus was in the Garden of the Gethsemane and the disciples slept? He asked, please pray with me. Pray with me. Remain here with me, watch.
children pray? And what did they do? They slept. John was disconsolate after that. After the death of the Christ, Umberto de Campos in the book Good News, Bonova tells us clear cut that he couldn't leave with that question, why? Loving the master as much as he did, why did he sleep when the master needed the most? And Jesus comes and tells us, we need greater vigilance. But it's not enough. As much as we're reminded by this every day, often like children, we think we're awake enough and we're bothered by the counsels of awakening. We're like, okay, I know, I know, I know. Like little kids, they tell us, I know, mom, mom. I know, I know, I know. Teenagers repeat it. And we adults continue repeating the same expression regarding the call of the master. Often we think what we're doing is enough. But the question is, is it really enough? What is Professor Euripides Barsonufo telling us? As someone who lived very closely with the suffering ones, who woke up at 4 a.m., Professor Euripides Barsonufo, woke up every day at 4 a.m. to start replying to the many letters, asking for advices, and for prescriptions, he had a pharmacy, a homeopathic prescription, Dr. Brazier prescribed through him, and he would, at 6 a.m., and, and in this book here, which is being translated, we have the whole schedule that Corina Novellino discloses to us of his daily life because she helped him throughout the process. And it's amazing. I just missed the page here, and I apologize for this, but he's, she says here that Professor Euripides Barsanufo would, from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. prescribe, and then see people, and then keep prescribing, seeing people, and then going to the school until 4 a.m., p.m., and then afterwards he would go to the center and stay there until 9 p.m., and then go home, etc., etc. But the point here for us is the world is suffering. And often we put a limit to the most important things. But on the least important ones, we leave it to the winds of our pleasure. I'll give an example. If we have a party, we stay up until 1, 2, 3 a.m. But if it's in the Spiritist Center, people are rushing. Like, we need to rush, we need to rush, we need to rush. And then why the rush? Chico Xavier was never in a rush. There's discipline to begin the meeting, but never to go home and close the doors because the works go on. No matter what happens, there's no rush. And people usually are in a rush. They quickly want to go home. But when it's a party, they stay on and on and on and on and on without limits. This is the sign that we're still sleeping. The heavy sleep of sensations, the sensations of the body, pleasure. And Euripides is saying, the greatest pain that was inflicted on the master that sacrificed for us. The question is, are we corresponding to that mentorship? We tonight are being asked, he says, human beings have not yet corresponded to the sacrifice of the Christ. Is the Christ demanding on us anything? No. But the educator, Euripides Barsanufo, fully awake, reminds us we're here to correspond. If you are a parent or a teacher, you know that it's vital for those who are working 
with you that they correspond to what you're planning on. If you're a teacher, you plan a lesson and the students shall correspond. How? By being diligent, by being disciplined, right? By being compliant. So the first homework for us in the next 24 hours is scale zero to 10, meditate, zero being not corresponding at all to the sacrifice of the Christ and 10 being 100% on it. Are we corresponding to the sacrifice of the Christ or are we still doing things because they match what I want? If it's what I like, gives me pleasure and what I want, I do it. Otherwise, I don't. That's when we're still sleeping, the heavy sleep of our sensations. So Professor Lips Barsanufu is saying to us, past 2,000 years in the landscape of the Garden of the Gethsemane, which represents to us the pain of the last hour, the same shadows of the comfort zone are still present. The same shadows. Psychologically, what are the shadows? The old conditionings. And the old conditionings keep us in the loop of the negative. How? You may be asking, how does that work? I'll give an example. Fear. Many people, if not majority on the earth, they take action in a daily basis driven by fear. It's a masked fear, but it's fear. An example. Family. Okay? And then somebody is not being appreciated in their attitude. Let's say you know your mom doesn't agree. It's a sibling. And you think it's not that bad what they're doing, but since your mom is upset, you don't want to disappoint. So the fear of not being loved and approved, etc., drives us to do what? Not to take action. And in that omission, we are co-responsible for how the family is relating to that person. Fear. In our work, the same happens. I've seen people who were, you know, kind of defiant to the voice of the boss but because even if we agreed, we were like, I'm not gonna say anything because if I say that I dislike or that I agree with this person, the boss not gonna like me. So then we're like, we stop talking to that person. The same happens in the spiritist movement and in any human group and organization on the earth today. We need to change that. Only an awakened mind can change it. So much so that our guidance model, Jesus Christ, changed it. People wouldn't talk to women in the streets. Nowadays, if you go to Israel or even to other countries in the Middle East, if you talk to women you don't know and if you are a man, you may, you may be in trouble. And that woman, if she talks to you, she may be in trouble. I'm talking in the street. Imagine 2,000 years ago, Jesus talked to any and every woman, any and every person, poor and rich, young and old, men and women. He really broke all the protocols. It takes courage. No wonder he said, courage 
is a trademark of the ones who follow the good news. Where is our level of courage? To do the good. To do the right. To do to others what we would like others to do to us. Tonight, the educator Euripides Barsonufo is empowering us to be coherent and to correspond to the lessons of the Master and no longer repeat the mistakes of the past because he says the same desertions happen to date and human beings remain oblivious to date, he says, 2,000 years later, to the fundamental problems of salvation. Our own inner betterment. Why? Because we go to places and we may be married and we're flirting with other people in a spiritist event. really oblivious to our own salvation. And what is salvation? Is our harmonization. Like children. Mom, I want to play the whole day, but you have to go to school. But why? I want to play. I know you don't understand yet, but you will. It's important for you. Have fun in your school. It can be fun. It's up to you to give it a new meaning, to see what others can see, and then share what you're seeing. We're being asked tonight. The same misunderstanding, the same shadows of the past, he says, is being repeated. Think of yourself as a computer. All the memories from the past, each reincarnation being a software, okay? And in each software, lots of files, the experiences we've lived, all stored in our computer, the mental computer of ourselves. How much of those softwares of the past are still open and playing a huge role in this life that we're living? What do you think? And repeating unnecessarily old programs that we no longer need. And you may be asking, what do I do? Call an IT to reorganize your computer. Who is that idea? Pencil and paper. Let's write down the name of the IT, Jesus Christ with your guardian angel. They are going to team up and help you. The therapy of virtues are going to help reorganize our files that we no longer need. Sometimes those files are clear-cut in our lives. For example, in our own families. Why do you resist to love and surrender to the loving call in your marriage. And some couples are funny. They stay married and in spite of being married, they, they refrain from actually embracing it, creating true self-sabotage. They think they are sabotaging others, they are sabotaging themselves. Why? It is what? A good amount of guilt charged often by grudges that we hold from previous lives. Because when we don't, we easily allow the flow of love to go through us easily. It's easier to love than not to do so. Because love, all it needs to flow is no obstacle. It is hard when we want to love and keep the obstacles between us and others. Creating conditions for love between us and our children. 
between ourselves and our spouses, between ourselves and any relative and family member, between us and neighbors and colleagues at work, friends, loving, as Chico Xavier used to say, just more or less. He says, if you love more or less, you're going to be more or less. We don't want to be more or less. We want to be loving fully and completely. If we keep the obstacle, so let's call the IT of the universe that is given to us on the earth, our dear Jesus Christ, one more role that he has on the earth that we found out. He's a wonderful IT to recycle and archive the memories that we no longer need, the obstacles, so we can, in the software of this life, create files, as Professor Euripides Barsonopoulos says, true experiences that are meaningful, that are sensible, that are deep, deeply charged in love, because we're fully awake. So in the next 24 hour, friends, let us together think about if we're corresponding to the lessons, if we're being compliant to the mentorship of the Christ that we have been given. Are we fully awake? How can we recycle files and say to ourselves, like Paul of Tarsus, it is possible, I no longer want to be stubborn. I no longer want to duel with XYZ people in my life. Sometimes in my very home, I want to love and to feel loved. Let us tell ourselves, I feel the love and I am loved. I feel the love and I am loved. I feel the love and I am loved. I am fully awake and corresponding to the lessons of the Master. Shall we? Yes? That's how we're going to harmonize ourselves. Moment of harmony. Let's correspond to the lessons given by the Master so we can live a better life. This is the message that Professor Euripides Barsanufo releases to us. And he asks us, how long will the Christ wait for the balance of our thoughts and deeds? So how do we balance our thoughts? How do we harmonize our thoughts? By thinking the positive. As Emmanuel says, seek the good, feel the good, visualize the good and mold the good with all the resources we can have. And as we practice the silence, being near people, we rejoice nearby, but feeling their presence, feeling the joy of being close, not necessarily we need to say a dissertation about it all, but we just be, we just feel and emanate. Right, Rudy? Right, Chaebi? Right, Raquel Bakeshi and Katia, Jailton, Paula, Karina Lissi, Lé Severo, Nina Dui, Daisy Gellin, Ellen Cortes, so beautiful, so Luana, Ana from Alabama, Teresa Castro, John the Rosa, Katia, Angelita Fraternity Without Borders, what a joy to see you there. Nora Brasil, Carol and Mark Smith, what a joy, my friends. Sunshine, big hug to you, Sunshine. My friend, the light man Narciso. Yeah, Julija, beautiful work, Julija. Célia Lancaster. Adilson, Patricia, and Rihanna, how are you? Teresa Catapano, friends, 
It's a joy to be with you and let us do our homework and ask ourselves, how can I correspond more to the love of our lives on the earth? Let's not be shy to say, Jesus is the love of our lives on the earth. That's a sure thing. And how are we corresponding to his love? Let's not think about individual to individual, but to the whole representation of the divine, the Christ consciousness. Let's meditate and balance our thoughts and actions. Until tomorrow, friends, God willing.